we're going to be talking about the 12 basic functions. Now, these are functions that you need to kind of have an idea of what the graph of it looks like. Um, the reason why is because sometimes you might not have a graph available to you, but you need to know what the shape of a certain graph is. Um, so we're going to just go through a couple of them using Desmos. As you can see, I've got 12 of them here. The first one is f of x. Uh, this one is just called the identity function. Pretty basic on that one. Everyone kind of knows what a line looks like. The next one in blue here, this is just a parabola. This is our x squared function, aka squaring function. If I were you and you're taking your notes, I would make a rough sketch of each one of these together on one little page. The next one is the cube root function. That's in green there. Um, this one is an x cubed. Note, granted, whenever you add anything extra, it's going to change the shape of it a little bit, but it's pretty much going to stay the same in that in that regard. There's a cubing function. Next one, as you guys can imagine, is the square root. Something to note with the square root function. Notice there is no negative side of our square root function because you can't have a negative underneath that square root. So just something to note there, unless you were to have um, some type of transformation of that square root function. The next one is our natural log function. We've talked about natural logs. You probably didn't know the graph though is my guess. Um, notice we have a Again, it does not go in the negatives because you can't have a negative when you are dealing with logarithms. The next one is the reciprocal function. You guys have seen the reciprocal function quite a bit um, in not necessarily this basic, but definitely more complex. Following that, we have the exponential function. This one is all over the media for 2020, definitely in regards to COVID-19 and following the spread there with the exponential function. Number eight is the sine function. Um, we've dealt with that again, dealing with when our trig stuff, we were moving our graph, whether we were stretching it out or moving it that way. Okay, I hope you guys have at least a couple of these as I erase them since they won't stay. Obviously, the basic one here for number nine is the cosine function. They're similar, sine and cosine are very similar, but they do, they're just shifted a little bit, a horizontal translation between the two. Next, the absolute value, it's got that nice perfect V shape. Okay, now something with this next one. In order for it to show up in Desmos, it's called a floor. Your you might also see it as a greatest integer function. What happens with this though is you have some, they don't show it here. I mean, Desmos kind of does, but if you notice here, I have a point at zero, zero, so that would be, it's included, right? So it's a closed dot, but as I go here, notice what happens. If I'm at, this spot here, it actually technically jumps up to this one. So it's kind of goofy. This really should look like a closed dot here 
open circle here. Closed, open, closed, open. The thing is, Desmos can't show it that way. Um, it's just not to that capability yet. And that's just something for you to note is they do in fact jump in between. It's called the floor function, just so you are aware. Um, and the last one is a logistic function. This one, I am pretty confident that you guys have not seen yet. We'll deal with it a little bit, not a whole lot, but just something for you to note. Um, with a logistic function, it actually has a horizontal asymptote at 1. And as you can see, it also has a horizontal asymptote there at 0. Now, these are your 12 basic functions. They are, again, things that you need to just kind of know in your head. What does an absolute value function look like? Well, it's a V-shape or, you know, something along those nat that nature in which you can just pretty much kind of have an idea of what you're looking for. Um, the next thing is talking about a piecewise function. And we've, we've dealt with piecewise functions before. Um, just like the name kind of tells you. This would be several parts to a function. We'll just kind of make this a little bit basic here. So let's, this would be a piecewise function. This right here is piece one. This right here is piece two. Um, there will be times that you will be asked to graph this. Personally, I think it's just easier to graph it by hand than trying to do it on Desmos and then copy it down. Um, other times you will be asked to go the reverse way and actually, you know, make an equation. But let's go ahead and graph this one. And let me get a graph out. Voila, magic, it just appears. Um, you might remember this from last year. We'll do this top part in red. Um, because I have a lower bound and an upper bound, I'm going to just substitute those values in. So I have 2 times negative 5 plus 1, which in this case equals negative 9. So I have an open circle at negative 5, negative 9. Now I'm going to do the upper bound. So 2 times negative 1 plus 1 is going to give me negative 1. That's a closed circle there. Because this is 2x plus 1, I know based on my basic functions here that this is just a line. Nothing special about it. Now this one. Again, I'm going to substitute that negative 1 in to get me to have a better idea of what's going on there. So I have a point at negative 1, 4, and it's an open circle. Now, this is the part where your basic functions come into play. You need to know what is the shape of this and how do I get it. Okay, well, it's an absolute value, so I know there's some type of V. And going back on, going back on my prior knowledge of translations and this function, I know that this is actually shifted a little bit in order to find my V shape. Now, some people like to just plug in more points to get a better idea of what that shift actually looks like. Um, because of this, because it's a negative 3, this is actually shifted 
to the right three, four vertex of V. Okay, so my absolute value, remember, has that V shape. Since it's a negative three there, I know that the bottom of this is actually shifted to the right three, and then it goes up from there. So I'm just going to continue drawing my shape. And there is my piecewise function. Again, using my prior knowledge of transformations of functions plus my 12 basic functions to have a better idea of what I'm looking for.